welcome to my 2016 Top 10 Games. My name's Jason Peacock. I also want to thank Tom for inviting me to do this. I was very excited when you asked. Alright, let's just get right into it. I'm going to start off with an honorable mention. And two honorable mentions. The first one, Royals. The reason why this is an honorable mention is because it's listed as a 2014 game, but this just came out to buy in Canada last month. To me, I consider it a 2016 game, but I'm just leaving it off the list because I'm not really sure about Royals. I just love that game. And the other one is Clank coming in at number 11, just missing. It's a deck builder dungeon delving game with a board that doesn't really do anything too new to the genre, but it's fun and I love playing it with my seven-year-old because he loves that game too. All right, so let's start with number 10, Scythe. This Euro game with a dash of Ameritrash theme, resource management, great decisions, wonderful production, there's no point in really talking too much about this game because everyone's heard of it, Scythe. All right, number nine. It's a little auction game that came out of nowhere. It's called Hit Z Road, a Martin Wallace little um, dice chucking auction game. It's it's like um, Run, Fight, or Die mixed with, uh, I don't know, some auction game, but you're basically a group of survivors, and you're trying to go from Chicago to L.A., one city to L.A., and um, the journey is represented by these pairs of cards that come up. These cards will have, like, events that'll happen. Sometimes a card will offer you a good thing. The cards will have, like, zombies that you have to fight, and you do that by rolling dice, and you know you you can totally get killed off and get eliminated from the game. It's really hard to get to the end. I still haven't still haven't survived to the end. But the auctioning comes in with people bidding resources that they use, like um, like bullets for fighting zombies, adrenaline for doing extra kills or staying alive, and uh, gasoline for being able to run away from a big fight. You spend these precious resources, which you really need to survive a set of cards, especially as the game, you get into the second and third deck. And you bid for first pick of the two location cards. Um, it's just a brilliant little game, and it's been a huge hit with everyone I've played. That's Hit Z Road. All right, number eight. It's a game that just got released at Essen. It emulates a first-person shooter or a third-person shooter. If you want to get technical, it emulates that style of a video game, running around in a deathmatch-style room with a gun, trying to get frags on other people. It's a Euro game dressed up as an Ameritrash. Um, you are playing weapons cards that you collect. There's like two dozen different guns, they all were completely different. If it's loaded, you play it from your hand. If somebody's in range, you do whatever damage by putting your blood drop color on their player board. So it's like an area majority game, and those areas you're trying to control are the other dudes on the map running around the dungeon. It's really cool, plays, um, plays in 45 minutes to an hour and a half probably. It doesn't have player elimination. If you get killed, you just respawn and you're worth less points the next time you're killed. It's not super deep, but it's fun enough and there's a light enough strategy aspect to it where I just fell in love with this game. That's Adrenaline. Number seven. A recent game that just came out last month. It is in the Cyclades Kemet family. I've never played Cyclades, but I really want to because Kemet's one of my favorite games and Inish is now one of my favorite games. Dudes on a Map, my favorite style of play. It's got a wicked um, action drafting. You're drafting your possible actions that round. You can also get special action cards based on the territories you control and you can get mega awesome action cards 
um, through other means of the game. And there's three different win conditions. You can accomplish one or more of them at the same time. If you have them accomplished, you'll take this pretender token, and then everybody else is gunning for you. It, it reminds me in Kemet in that way, with the temporary victory points, because soon as you have eight and you're going to win at the end of the round, then everybody's coming for you. And Inish has a little bit of that endgame stuff, which I really like. All right, number five. After this year, Portal Games has become one of my favorite companies. They released 51st State. It didn't make this list, but it's pretty close to the top 10 this year. Uh, my wife and I's one of our most played games is Imperial Settlers. Stronghold 2nd Edition came out this year. Now, if I had have played the first edition, I might not have counted this, but this was my first introduction to Stronghold. And man, I love this game. This is an amazing two-player game. Ignacy Trevicek, to me, seems like the master of asymmetric games. You're, you've got one guy controlling a, a fortress, like Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers kind of thing. You've got a small army of, of dudes. And then hordes of trolls, orcs, and goblins are coming at you from all these different paths. They're building siege engines. They're they're launching catapults at your walls. There's casting spells. There's a lot going on. Both sides play completely different. Both sides are equally fun for me to play. I find it's way more stressful being the defender, though, for some reason. But this game is uh, amazing. And there's an Undead expansion coming out next year. That's probably my most anticipated expansion. All right, number four. I was just talking about Portal games. Cry Havoc. Now, when Portal was coming out with a dudes on the map game with asymmetrical factions, I just pre-ordered. I didn't read the rules or anything. I just knew I wanted that game, and I wasn't disappointed. I think it offers some of like the, the best decision-making in a game I've played this year. All the factions play completely different. Everything you do matters. You've got three actions over... Five rounds of the game, and you can't afford to waste even one of those. Everything you do matters, and there's such a huge range of choices. you got to worry about what everyone else is doing. Cry Havoc's just a game. I want to keep getting to know the strategies, and I recommend checking out the strategy guys that were released for each of the different factions. Really opens up your mind on how to play these different ones. All right. So, that brings us to number four. This is a card game that came out of nowhere. Now, back in the day, I got into Magic back when, you know, I had a Black Lotus and all the Moxes, and I was playing in tournaments. And, like a lot of people, I just got tired of the collectability. They kept coming out with new sets. Old sets were getting obsolete. I washed my hands of it, and I haven't really dipped into it since. But this game, Codex, came out... And this one and Mage Wars Arena really give me my magic feeling. Because, I mean, I, I do have a lot of respect for magic, and I love the gameplay. Codex is a totally encompassing game. There's no new sets coming out. Everything for the game is out. It's been tournament balanced. And it's so much fun. It's, it's supposed to emulate, like, a, um, a real-time strategy game. It doesn't feel like that at all. You know, you're putting cards into a discard pile and that's apparently supposed to be like going through the, the fog like in Warcraft, like you don't know what's coming up. It doesn't do that at all. But you've got these heroes, they've all got their schools of magic. You're playing with three different heroes and um, like Mage Wars, you, you're, you're picking from your set of spells out of whatever hero you want to draw from and your deck building you're putting it into your discard pile which you're going to get later the uh the range of decisions and and possibilities in this game are awesome number three big box game from prolific designer eric lang the others this game is mechanically or like arcadia quest as if it was one guild versus all of the monsters. So one or more players control the 
faith team, and one person controls one of the seven sins, uh, a group of demons, and they mix them with uh, acolytes, and they've got these hell club guys. For me, it's like Mad Max meets Cthulhu. I love the anti-hero theme and the, the dark end-of-the-world apocalyptic feel this game has. The miniatures are amazing. I've had such a good time painting these, and they really bring this game to life. It's got Eric Lang's trademark exploding dice, so you always have a chance to get out of a situation or defend a situation. A really fun corruption mechanic where our anti-heroes can choose to take corruption to get bonuses. Can't get enough of this game. It's been wonderful painting them. I'm just about done. I would never turn down a chance to play this. Eric Lang's The Others. Number two. Now this game I've been talking about on my channel since I got it. It's one of the best family games around. It's one of the most beautiful presentations of a game and one of the best value for your dollar. Mechs versus Minions. I uh, absolutely love this game, but Mechs versus Minions, co-op game, easy to teach. It's like program movement, but there's a, enough flexibility in your program movement and it's not frustrating like uh, some might feel from Robo Rally. Um, this has been a hit with everyone I've played with. I probably played it with my son Hayden like 20 times. More than a few occasions we would play a scenario and then we'd play another one and then we'd play another one and where has the night gone? All of a sudden we've played three, four scenarios and it's two o'clock in the morning. And Riot Games has a radio play on their website where all the characters are telling a story over each mission and if you have kids I highly recommend this because it just it excites them like nothing else so that's Max versus Minions the number one game I was late getting the Kickstarter I've been waiting for two years it finally showed up and I love the game and that is Conan from Monolith there's a lot of problems with the rule book and this and that, but the rule system with spending your your gems on actions however you want in whatever order you want back and forth between the heroes creates this kinetic feel unlike anything else I've played in a board game. And the fact that there is so much room to start telling your own stories, like this is a game my son and I can throw the map out, we can start grabbing pieces and try and create a story out of it. What if Conan steal this camel from this hut over here and these guys are protecting it? The, there's an unlimited amount of possibilities. Conan. All right, well, that's my top 10 list of 2016. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.